everybody to just sit down in a circle. Well, I know that all my colleagues will want to about 10 years ago, I worked with her uh, in my project, which is uh, bringing arts programs into uh, correctional facilities for juveniles, uh, juvenile offenders, and children, and uh, primarily in Montgomery County, but also worked in Prince George's and in Baltimore. And Debbie has uh, been a storyteller for many years, and I'm sure she'll tell you a little bit more detail about that. Uh, but she has worked uh, all. This was a land that had no violence against children, there was no word for child abuse. And in the Lakota tradition, I, we have a foundational story that perhaps explains why that is so. And I'd like to begin with that story. They say there were two men who were walking across the open country one day. That good land, the open country. And these two men were Khola, which to us are men who become brothers chosen. A stronger thing than brothers born to each other. Khola. It is one of the making of relatives, one of our oldest and most sacred ceremonies. And so these two kola were walking along. They were meant to be hunting, but as men who had been boys together, now men, sometimes boys together still, they were walking along and they were just looking at the beauty of the country when suddenly one of the men said, Hey, brother, do you see what I see in the distance? And his friend looked and said, I see nothing. I, your eyes are never as good as mine then. Look in the distance, do you not see? There's a shape walking toward us. Look at that shape and tell me what you see. I do indeed, I see. Is this a woman coming toward us? Yes, it is, brother. There is a woman coming toward us. And you know what I see? I see she is a woman alone. And his friend says to him, his brother says to him, we should offer her our help. A woman walking with no relations. A woman with no uncle, no brother, no father beside her, we should help this one. Let us go and offer ourselves to help this woman on her journey. And his friend looks at him and says, what are you saying? This is a woman with no protection. And my eyes are better than yours, for I can see this is a good-looking woman. Now the man looked, and in the distance he saw what his friend was speaking about. For this woman that walked toward them was in a white buckskin covered with patterns, strange in shape, and colors, colors he could not describe the words for, colors he had seen only before in the stars. This woman's hair was braided on one side of her head, and on the other side of her head it hung loose. The leaves of the white sage were over her ear, and as she walked toward him, he could see indeed she was a woman of extraordinary beauty. He turned to his friend and he said, See, see, I told you she is beautiful. Do you not see? And he said, I see what you are speaking of, but what I see is, as she walks toward us, her feet do not touch the earth. She is a holy being. This is one who is Waka, a sacred one, walks toward us. Her feet do not touch the earth. Do you not see that? And he said, I see only that she walks alone. And he reaches out to hold his friend back and he says, I do not know what you are thinking, brother. But if you think to make harm to this woman, I will stop you. And he shakes him loose. He says, you have never been able to stop me at anything I wish to do. <coughs> I am the stronger of the two of us. And I am certainly stronger than that one I see coming. And he turned and walked toward that woman. His friend cried out, but he was not so strong. He was not so fast. He could not catch up to his friend to stop him from this unthinkable thing that he meant to do, to cause harm to a woman. As he breached out, trying to grab him, a great swirling wind came up, and his friend was lost in this wind. As this wind whirled and whirled and whirled, the sound of it filling his head, all he could hear was that wind, and he stepped back, and at last, day, dry, more meat. He will see that you are making more meat for him to stack in his tent to rot and turn to dust, and you are making him wealthy. He will leave you alone. Each day, make more moccasins. He will see you are making more moccasins than a man could wear in a life, and he will be wealthier still, and he will leave you alone. Then you will have moccasins, moccasins for the journey ahead of you. I will come to you when it is time. And so the girl looked at the woman, and for a moment she believed what the woman said to her. For a moment she dared to believe what this woman said that she could not have said for her own life. And she began to dry more meat. She began to make more moccasins. 
and her husband began to spend more time away from that lodge. Then the old woman returned and said, give me those things you need. You're sewing all, those things to start a fire. Give me those extra moccasins. I will wrap them in a blanket. I will put them by the oaks, by the creek. You will meet me there by that place tonight, and you will go to your relatives. They travel now to the north. In four nights' time, you will find them. And so, that night, the old woman... <laughs> And uh, also, I have a chance to bring a lot of American people to my family in Mali. I go with them to teach them the history. Here, I do work in Lara Lara University, but I have in my little group, three people. When we travel, we go to a couple of universities, even China, because I do 27 concerts in China, but all is like the history, they want to know a lot of stuff. But I have my people, because my accent in English is not for me. You know, sometimes I speak, people don't understand. But I like to let my people, the one who go to my family, stay over there. American people learn the language and speak very well uh, English more than me. Hello. My name is Liddell Jackson. I'm a visual artist, and I'm here at Amnesty International. Human Rights Festival, and this is my agent in the Washington, D.C. and Maryland metro area, Joan V. And I've been an artist for more than 25 years, actually. I uh, originally began working in commercial art and design, graphic design, and have since retired from that and began to pursue the fine arts career. Um, and this is are examples of my work over a period of time. As you can see, I use a lot of different mediums, um, from oil paintings to acrylic, and in recent years, I've started to develop techniques in digital design and fine art. And so these are the things that I really enjoy in sharing with people. Um, and I think people are my favorite subject in particular. This painting here is one that I call indigenous, which is a tribute to indigenous people and the knowledge of indigenous people that they possess around the world. Um, if you notice that he's holding the light, the source of light or knowledge in the palm of his hand, I think there's a lot that we can learn from people who are close to the, the planet and understand things that we in uh, areas of higher learning probably dismiss, so this is my tribute to all indigenous people.